hi and welcome back to my channel today one of the most awaited videos which is the uh, solar that is the panels installed up there is finally here so i'm dedicating today's video to talk about what went into the solar so without not talking further let me just go ahead and get started now quick disclaimer i am not a solar expert or professional i probably might be making some little mistake maybe interchanging some few terms and the rest but basically i'm just going to share with you what went into um the installation of our solar so to get started um there are a few terms that i'll be using some of the terms is uh amp hours that is ah watt um sine wave or yeah electrical waves and the rest and um yeah i think pretty much some of the terms i'll be using is that so to talk about the system we have there it's a little bit noisy in there. that's how come i've come to sit in here but i'll show you the devices that we have in there so to talk about the devices we have the solar panels which are out um we have to set up as a now we intend setting about four the size of one panel is 180 watt so that's one size um that's the size of one panel up there so we have two which makes it 360 watt off panel and then we have the inverter so the inverter we have is the hybrid type inverter so it's, it's not just a hybrid inverter it is also a pure sine wave inverter which brings me about a very important term within the solar um, systems so there are different types of waves i think about three the pure sine wave the modified sine wave as well as the square wave so this has to do with how the electrical pulses you know of yeah, the electrical pulse goes uh, with the system so i'm told that the pure sine wave is the best because the waves goes in this form whereas the modified sine wave goes a little bit like this like this yeah and then the square wave goes like this and so on now most appliances i'm told are designed to work well with uh, the pure sine wave which goes uh, this way so this yeah that is a pure sine wave so um those those are some of the things i discovered when i started making some research about solar system so i found out that there yeah, are different types of waves which are three the pure sine wave the modified sine wave and then um square wave so i had to inquire about what are the advantages and disadvantages of each and i noticed that even though the modified sine wave would have been also okay to work with uh, it is not best used um, in um, running um, devices that has motors in them so an example is like a fridge a uh, grinding machine and so on and so then that got me to go in for a pure sine wave inverter i must say that the pure uh, pure sine wave inverters are a little bit expensive compared to the other uh, you know waves that are available so what we have running is a 3000 watt inverter or 3 kva inverter that is the size of the inverter now it is a hybrid inverter hybrid in the sense that you can run it put using the grid as well as staying off grid that is using um, solar power and even also using um, a generator so you can you know configure your electrical system to have all these um, phases that is the generator the solar as well as connected to the grid so whichever one you're running the inverter is a smart one which is able to pick up and then you know which one is currently running based on the wiring so that is also important now aside the size of the inverter we have ideally we would have needed a charge controller which would have taken power from the solar panels and then match them to the batteries now the inverter already has an inbuilt charge controller so there is no need to get an external charge controller well for some systems you probably can add a charge controller but since the inverter already has that we don't have that running and then also we have we can really have two batteries now the batteries uh, sizes are 100 ah each so we have 200 ah um, that we are currently running now also there are different voltages for the um, solar inverters there's a 12 volt system there is a 40, uh, 24 volt system as well as a 48 volt system so what we have running is a 24 volt system um, some may ask which one is the best well i'm told that they are all good however if you are running maybe uh, for a very big house or warehouse and 
you know, big, you know, setup and the rest, probably would be best to go in for either 24 volts or 48 volt. So talking about the voltage, which also brings me to the battery. So the batteries aside having amp hours or AH also have voltages. So what we have are 12 voltages battery. So we have two of 12 voltage. So you may ask, how come I have a 24 volt inverter system? However, I'm running a 12 volt battery. So this is where the, the trick comes in. So when doing the configuration of the solar system, that is the panels as well as the battery, there are different ways you can configure both the panels and battery. So we have the series, the series, um, yeah, um, I'll talk about maybe, I may not be able to talk much about it, but we have the series as well as the parallel. So what I'm told or what I found out with the series is that the, in the series increases the voltage at which whatever the device is running. So if it is the batteries and we have 200 age, so we have 100 age, another 100 age. When we match them together, running it in a form of, um, in a series form, we are increasing the voltage of the two batteries so instead of it running as 12 volts it is now 24 volt because we're running it in a series way so that is what we are doing so we're running the batteries in series which is giving us 24 volts however we are getting only 100 ah that is the downside so if you are connecting your batteries in series it means depending on whatever size voltage of batteries you are having you are increasing the voltage of the battery and you are maintaining just one of the um that is amp hours that is the ah if we're running the batteries in parallel mode what that will mean is that we are going to be having a 12 volt um system as well as 200 ah amp hours so that means that we would have had like a battery lasting for a longer time so those are the you know the differences between the parallel aspect as well as the series aspect now with the panels also we're running them in series that would also be able to increase the output of the panel yes yeah, so that is um with regard to that now when running the system um when the electrical you know system was being designed i had to make the electrician aware that we are going to be using solar so so he had to make provision for that so from the main distribution board there's um powers power lines or lines that or cables that are coming from there that comes to the solar system so here's what's happening now we have the solar panels a cable from the solar panels that goes through a 2.5 so we use 2.5 mm cables for that so the solar panel is itself has its cables i've forgotten the name of the, the i probably will put it on the screen and it has it connected when, when what i bought i didn't get a connectors for it so we just had to directly connect them to the 2.5 mm cables which comes from the panels to the inverter now on the inverter there are different slots to put what the pv normally stand for the solar panel and then we have um, um the dc the dc is direct circuit or is it direct current direct circuit or direct current i don't know but it's dc and then there's also ac so the dc is the direct power which is going into the system that is from the batteries that you have running that is what we have here and then the ac is uh, we have ac in and then ac out ac in is when you're running the grid you connect your ac in, in in it and then ac out is what is going to go to your distribution board to supply the power to the entire house so that is basically how the setup is um, done now i must say that with the panels there are i think there are two types there's the mono and then there's the poly now based on some research that i made i noticed that the poly um, the mono is more efficient compared to that of the mono so how will you be able to tell um, the difference between mono and then poly so one of the things i'm told is the color which is black which i'm not so much convinced because uh, you can have a poly which probably might be black but i'm told um the poly is most of the time a little bit um, blue black and then the mono is uh black aside that i'll put pictures on the screen for you to be able to see the difference between the mono and then the poly so in case you are going um to purchase them you don't make mistakes with that i'm sure you might be interested in the cost as well as who did the installation why got the devices and so on so here's the thing um before going about the solar and the rest i had to make inquiries about how much it was going to cost installation uh, materials and everything and for some of the research i was making people who are selling like certain solutions like maybe a 
24 volt system maybe four panels maybe three batteries four batteries uh 3kv or 2kv a inverter some as much as 20,000 30,000 and so on so then it's like hmm, this is really expensive so i decided you know what let me just look at the cost of the devices individually and see if i'm be able to get it from different sources and then probably build a whole system maybe by myself so i did that uh, i started making inquiries i saw prices of inverters so i started checking prices of inverters on gg so i go on gg i search for the size that i want that is 3kva and then uh, 2kva see the prices for them and then i was able to arrive at one then i went out to make purchase of it so the price of that one was 3300 cities that is for the 3kva inverter before i continue with the prices of the rest you may ask how did i get to know um that i would need a 3kva system so that's the good question so good thing for me is i have two friends who uh both engineers so i have been disturbing them with a lot of you know questions about the solar systems and uh the you know the terms and everything so i had to find out from them what kind of system will i need to run is it a 2000 watt is it a thousand watt or a 3000 watt so based on um, their recommendations they were recommending between 2000 and then 3000 why that had to do with the appliances i was looking at powering in this house with the inverter now i must say that um every appliance has its wattage that it consumes or it needs to run them how do you find that so most of them so let's say a fridge for instance probably will be at the back or maybe when you open the fridge or by the side of it depending on whatever fridge it is so once you so for my fridge when you open the inside of it it is there which is a samsung um fridge as a it's it needs a um, power um, input of 110 watts to be able to run it so 110 watts it's an energy efficient fridge which is like you know you don't really need so much power to be able to power it so that was that is for the fridge so it means i'm going to be powering a fridge i'm going to be powering up some light you know in my light that is the electrical videos i made mention of the size of the what um the wattage of the light so the outside uh lights are 50 watts each so for the four of them that is 200 watts so it means if i'm turning on all of them at the same time I i'm i'll be running 200 watts and then the inside ones are 12 watts each so if i do the calculation plus the outside light i probably will be around maybe 300 and something or close to 400 so that is for that's just the light now my tv also runs about uh, i can't really tell but i'll probably put them on the screen so i'll be powering a tv one tv i'll be powering four fans not at the same time so that is also an important thing you need to know that some of these devices um to be able to tell what size you need um will also depend on if you are going to be powering up them all of them at the same time or at different times or maybe some and then others are not going to be on so those are very important so i have four fans as well i think each is like about 30 watts or so i'm not so sure probably will have to check so four fans um four outside light i think the inside light are about let me see two four six six seven eight nine ten so this are also ten uh, lights for the inside including the porch which are 12 um watts each. so that's 120 so that adds up to the house i like making it 320 watts of you know power to be able to power up the light and when you include that of the fan fans will also be around 120 that makes it like about uh 440 yeah to be able to power that and then you have the fridge you also have um a computer you have an ion the ion was like about a thousand and something was a thousand and something yeah should think so you have an iron of course iron will not be powered up all the time you also have kettle kettle is not going to be powered up all the time um and then some kitchen appliances a blender um i don't have a microwave yet i don't think i'll probably get some i don't know maybe i might maybe i might not and then some few other things so like i said each of these devices had the watts that needs to power them up so once you're able to find the watts you calculate them all and then you see the total you get like i said you're not going to be powering up all these devices at once so it is good to know which ones are going to be powered up at certain times and then when you're making your calculations you're able to tell which ones are not going to be powered up at certain times and so on and then you're able to arrive at the size of inverter that you are going to need so um after my calculation i arrived at around between 2000 
yeah, 2000, 2200, they are about uh, for everything. If I'm pairing up everything, yeah, so then that was like good to go with the 3000 watt inverter so if you are deciding on choosing a size of inverter you need to be able to do these calculations to be able to tell which size of inverter you are going to be able to need to run your system um aside that also the batteries so i bought one of the batteries for 800 cities from china mall um ideally it would have cost around um around was it thousand five hundred thousand two hundred yes there are also different brands with the batteries i'm told that rita brand and then osua brand are good to go with however others are you know con you can consider others what i got was as a genetic or something from china uh more on the sprinters route so i got two of them yeah that is not what i'm going to be using entirely because we needed some power at some point to be able to do some work so even as and now we're using a grinding machine to cut the worktop for the kitchen. The cabinet has been installed and then we needed power to cut that. So that you know, the power we have came in very handy to do that. Aside uh, from that, so I got two of the, the batteries which makes a 1,600. So 1,600 plus a 3,300 for, for the inverter makes it a total of 4,900. So that is for the inverter and the two batteries. The panels i got one for 600 cities ideally it was coming for 620 but i got a discount 20 cities off so the two is um 1200 so 4900 plus 1200 4900 plus 1200 yeah i'll put a total amount on the screen so you see that so that is what i've spent so far on the system we have running so just as i um, as, as i said earlier i intend having four panels and then for the batteries, I'm only having 200 AH. I also intend adding up to 200 AH. So that will give me 400 AH. Now, if I'm going to be adding up batteries, you might be asking, are they going to be 24 volt batteries or 12 volt batteries? So because I already have two batteries connected in series, I can't increase the voltage. So it means I'm going to be getting 12 volt batteries, which are going to be connected parallel to what are, what um, the connection which is already there so that i don't increase the voltage i maintain the voltage however i increase the amp hour so if i add up two 200 um ah batteries to the system i have running i'll be having a total of 500 ah so i have two 200 which makes it 400 plus 100 which makes it 500 and then the voltage is going to still be 24 volt system and the other two batteries will be parallel to or connected parallel to whatever system the system that we have running so these are just the uh, basic understanding that I, I got when I was making research about um, the solar system. So you need a, um, you know, the panels, and you, need an, you need an inverter, you need a charge controller, you need batteries to be able to you know, sustain the energy. Now, fixing of the panels also is very important. Um, so I had to get reels, two reels, which the panels are going to be fixed on top of them on the ceiling so my one of my major concerns when it came to the installation of the panels were not to directly have them installed on the roofing sheet why because um, as i've already said in some videos we are using plaster boards which doesn't like any form of leakage so i didn't want to open up myself to leakages uh with the solar panels installation so i had to think of a way to go about it so i designed what what is there the wood there and then um, i had my brother help me install it and then we put a rails on top of the wood and then we store the panels on top of the on the distant the rail so the wood are just on the other side on the roofing sheet is just lying on the sheet however it is nailed to the ceiling joint so it is very very firm very firm so you might ask why did i decide to install the panels at the direction yes so where i'm sitting and my back is facing where it is installed so i had to take into consideration where the sun sets um the sun rises and then the sun also sets so the place it's facing is where the sun sets now it rises from the other side however it doesn't take so much time for it to you know get to the top so when it gets to the top of it i'm able to get some of the sunlight however even when it is rising from the other side you get some of the sunlight and when it is settling it takes a uh, like some time when it going it's going all the way this way it takes some time to settle entirely so i'm able to draw much power from the sun 
also another important calculation which comes into play with the size of panels you need for the batteries that you have running is for how long the sun normally shines so i'm told that the sun shines continuously for about five to six hours so that means that with the panels i have that is 360 watts the two of them i'll have to multiply that by five or six so let me just do the calculation and see what i got i get here so let me just um calculate for this so let me just 360 times let me just make it five so i get 1800 if i make it 360 times six i get 2160 so that means that if i'm getting 2160 um now one battery which is 100 ah um i'm told it has like 12 cells in it so each of them is 100 so if you multiply it by that you get it's a thousand two hundred watts so that is for the um per one batch that is 100 ah so that means that if i'm getting 1001 uh, 1000 let me just go with a six hours instead if i'm getting 2160 that means that i'll be able to power up close to two batteries that is where the two panels that i have uh, installed and if i'm getting more panels that is two more it probably will be able to increase that so uh that'll mean that if i want to power up all the batteries fully um that is if they are from zero powering up all of them fully or i'm going to be draining all the batteries that means i might need more than four of the panels however i intend to just stick with um, two more which will make it a total for uh, panels because i don't intend drawing up all the powers from the battery if i have like my complete setup there so that is one thing you need to know if you are thinking about the size of the panels you need as well as the um capacity will be able to provide with the calculation of the um, sun also one thing i also discovered when i was purchasing the panels was that the bigger the size of the panel that is in terms of the watt its output the bigger it looks also i don't know how true if or if it is for all panels but that was one thing i discovered so i saw 320 watt panel size and it was very big it was like two times bigger than what we have installed there uh, yeah and even 400 was much bigger so yes those were very big and i was thinking of its installation if i get a very big one it'll be very difficult to you know install them so i decided to just go with a six that is the two um 180 watts the two of them so that it'll be easier to install that so we had that installed so i had that installed with the help of my brother i'm sure i've said a lot of things with regard to the solar so let me just do a quick recap of them so that yeah you don't get confused along the line so if you're thinking of installing a solar system uh, you need to know the size that you need that is the size of panels the size of the inverter the size of the batteries and then the quantity that you need and then also you need to identify the type of inverter that you need there's a pure sine wave there's modified sine wave and then square wave and then also the panels there's mono there's poly um, the difference is that the mono produces or it's more efficient compared to that of the poly but however they all work well and also you might need a charge controller if your inverter isn't uh, a hybrid type which has the inverter um, that is a charge controller built into it aside from that you also need to um, take or factor into it what devices you are going to be using take a look at all their wattage write them down and then add them up together that is if you are going to be using them all of them at the same time um, so that you're able to get a total watt or the total uh, you know kva that you need for the inverter to be able to run your system now when you're mounting your panels it is very good to take into consideration where the sun rises where the sun sets or which part or which angle the sun you know shines the most also the angle is very very important so what we have um installed is like about how many is it about 45 degrees probably about 45 degrees angle yeah which is um, not a bad angle to go with so that is also important if you install your panels flat i'm not sure you're going to be getting a lot of you know sound power or power or energy from it so the angle is also important so i think um i'm done uh, maybe if there's something i haven't spoken about you can just go ahead to drop your questions in the comment section so that i do well to um, answer you so aside from that i think my total let me just go do the calculation for what i the cost i incurred installing the panels 
and then the, the entire solar system. So 3,300 plus 1,200 plus um, 1,600 gives me a total of 6,100. I purchased the reels as well, I think, for like uh, 200 or so. I probably don't remember. But everything amounted to about 6,600 um, CDs for the installation of the panels. So that is the current setup that I have. So two more batteries of, that is two more 100, 200 AH is going to be um, about 4,000, 4,400 or 4,500 there about. However, I'll just get started with one, that is one 200 AH to see how well it's able to power up everything. And if it is okay to go with, I'll just stick to that. If not, I'll just include one more 200 AH and then I'm good to go. So, and then the panels also, um, I might include two, um, 180 watts so that i'm able to you know store more energy in the battery so basically that's just about it for this video uh, in case you are interested in the schematic design for the solar panels installation of course you can let me know and i can um, let that out to you at just a little fee so yeah i also have a lot of people who are interested in building the same um, house so if you're also interested in the electrical schematic design also you can let me know and i can help you with with that for a little fee as well so that'll be about it for now thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one